This is the JBL Party Box 300, and in short, this thing is no joke. It's a battery powered box speaker that's essentially a souped up JBL boombox, but with a built in light feature, something that JBL is actually pretty good at if you just look at their Pulse 3 and their Pulse 4. And if you're looking for a large speaker for your garage last man cave, then I think the Party Box 300 is a pretty solid option to consider. But first off, I want to go over pricing. The Party Box 100 retails for $350, the Party Box 200 retails for $450, and the Party Box 300, which is what I have here, retails for $500. But then there's also the Party Box 1000, which retails for $1,200. But just keep in mind the Party Box 1000 and the Party Box 200 don't have built in batteries, so they're not as portable or as versatile as the Party Box 100 or the Party Box 300. And also keep in mind the Party Box 300 retails for the same price as the JBL Boombox. But nonetheless, if you want to pick any of these speakers up, they'll be linked down below. Now, I want to address the portability of this speaker because I'm assuming that if you're looking into getting a battery powered box speaker like this one, you might plan on taking it on the go with you on occasion. Now, this speaker weighs in at 35 pounds, which isn't too bad, and it also has built in carrying handles. But when it comes to the overall durability of the speaker, you still gotta be mindful of it. The speaker has a mostly plastic body, which can get scratched easily, and it also doesn't have any kind of IP water or dust resistant certification, mainly cause of the exposed ports on the back. Now, when it comes to ports, this speaker has a pair of RCA input and out ports, so if you want, you can hook the speaker up to a receiver, or you can hook this speaker up to another speaker. But this speaker also has a NOx jack and this speaker also has a USB-A out port which you can use to charge your own phone. But you can also use the USB-A port on the speaker and plug in a thumb drive and play music from there. And lastly, the speaker also has a pair of mic and guitar inputs just in case you want to hook either of those things up to the speaker. The only thing that I do wish that this speaker did have was a USB-C port because a lot of phones these days are starting to come included with USB-C to USB-C cables and even the new iPhone 11 Pro comes included with the USB-C to lightning cable. But now I want to address the charging ports on the speaker. You get your standard two prong AC cable and you use the AC port on the speaker to either power the speaker and or charge the internal battery. But you also get a second cable which you can use with your car charger to power the speaker. But just keep in mind if you're using your car to power the speaker, it'll play music but it's not going to actually charge the internal battery. In order to charge the internal battery, you gotta use the AC port. Now, when it comes to battery life on this speaker, this speaker has an advertised battery life of 18 hours, but that's with the volume set at 50%. If you use this speaker at higher volumes, we're looking at a real world battery life of around four hours, which isn't all that bad. But I do wanna point out that this speaker sounds very different from when it's plugged in versus from when it's running off of its internal battery. This speaker sounds best when it's plugged in because when it's plugged in, you can really feel the bass. Whereas when the speaker's running off of its own internal battery, the bass on the speaker is reduced to help extend its battery life. But the speaker actually has a bass boost button. So if you want, you can increase the bass on the speaker, but you're going to sacrifice your battery life. But there's actually two levels to this bass boost button. And if you press the bass boost button twice on the speaker, then the speaker is going to sound basically identical to what it sounds like when it's plugged in. Now the bass boost button doesn't change the overall sound signature of the speaker. It literally just increases the amounts of bass you physically feel, which I really appreciate. Now, just like the rest of JBL speakers, the party box puts an emphasis on the mids and vocals so that they don't get overpowered by the bass. But so that you can hear for yourself, we're going to jump into a sound test. But as a heads up, we're going to be sound testing the party box with its flat sound signature versus its bass boosted sound signature. And I'm also going to be throwing in the new sound box. 
Now, I know this isn't an apples to apples comparison because the new Soundbox is a $1,000 speaker, but the new Soundbox is currently my favorite speaker, and I'm also pretty sure you guys are going to be asking, how does the Party Box stack up against the Soundbox? So, like you may have just heard, the bass boost button on the party box doesn't really change how it sounds. Mids and vocals stay front and center, and really the only difference is the amount of physical bass that you feel, which unfortunately is just something that I can't convey to you over the internet. But the soundstage and instrument separation on the party box is noticeably weaker compared to the sound box. The sound box just sounds way more open and clearer. And not to mention, the bass also hits much harder and it also gets way louder. But again, the sound box literally costs twice as much as the party box. But nonetheless, the party box sounds decent and distortion isn't a problem at higher volumes. But I do want to point out that the party box only gets slightly louder than the JBL boombox. I was kind of expecting the loudness difference between the party box and JBL boombox to be greater than it actually is. But the major performance difference between the party box and the boombox is the bass. The difference in bass between these two speakers is huge, but the overall loudness not as much as I'd like it to be. But with sound quality out of the way, let's talk about all the extra features found on the speaker. Now first off, the speaker has a built-in light feature. And personally, I think this light feature looks way better than a lot of other speakers out there that also have a light feature, namely Sony speakers. But unfortunately, JBL's speaker only has three lighting modes to choose from. Now, they all look good, but I still wish that this speaker had more lighting modes to choose from. And unfortunately, this speaker doesn't connect to JBL's Connect app, so you can't customize the light feature on this speaker like you can with the Pulse 4. So even though the Party Box has a very impressive light feature, I just think there's a lot more potential here because both the Pulse 3 and Pulse 4 shows that JBL can do a lot more with this light feature. But now let's talk about the Bluetooth connectivity on this speaker. The speaker is using Bluetooth 4.2 and it can be connected to two devices at the same time so you and a friend can both be DJing. 
But unfortunately, this speaker is only suitable for listening to music because there is a noticeable amount of latency across the board whenever you try to play any videos through this speaker, whether you're using an iPhone or Android device. But finally, even though this is a JBL speaker, unfortunately, the Party Box does not have JBL Connect Plus or Party Boost, meaning that you can't pair this speaker up to any JBL Connect Plus speakers or Party Boost speakers. You can, however, wirelessly pair this speaker up to one Party Box speaker. Even though that's cool and all, I still wish this speaker had Party Boost so you can pair it up to some of JBL's newer speakers because personally, I am just not a fan of all of the segmentation JBL has going on. But overall, the JBL Party Box 300 is a pretty solid speaker to consider if you're looking for something big to use in your garage, man cave, home gym, or maybe even frat house. And thanks to its rechargeable battery, you can easily move it around or take it on the go with you from time to time. But if you're looking for a speaker to constantly shuttle around from location to location, I would think twice before getting the speaker. The construction of the speaker isn't super durable, so you don't want to risk breaking it by dropping it or getting it wet. But nonetheless, it sounds good and it has a lot of bass, but I still wish it got a little louder than the JBL boombox. But don't get me wrong, the speaker gets more than loud enough. The light feature on the front is impressive and I think it looks way better than Sony's light feature, but I wish you had more customization options. And finally, even though you can wirelessly chain this speaker up to another party box, I wish you could pair this speaker up to some of JBL's party boost speakers. I'm not knocking the party box, I'm just giving JBL ideas for the party box too. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any of the products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.